Otter in the Cove by Miska Miles. In this story, Maggie's dad is a fisherman, and he worries that otters along the shore will make it difficult for him to earn money for his family. Maggie sat down near the edge of the low rocky cliff and baited her hook. The beach was empty. Not even Barnaby was in sight. That dog, probably sound asleep and snoring under the kitchen table this very minute. Green water frothed beneath her feet, and strings of ropey kelp swung with the waves. Out in the cove, the kelp was yellow-brown, and its big floating bulbs glittered in the morning sunshine. But something was different, strangely different. Five small logs floated high on the river, on the water. Gray and white seagulls cruised above them. Puzzled, she sat without moving, waiting. A small herd of otters rocked with the roll of the waves. Cradled in the blankets of kelp, four paws folded on their chests. Swiftly, a young brown otter swam toward the still figure on the edge of the cliff. The otter came close. Maggie was almost afraid to breathe. His eyes were dark and unblinking, his round flat nose shining black, whiskers short and stiff. Then he slid back into the water and was gone. Offshore, the logs came to life. A mother otter floated on her back, her baby curled on her stomach. She curved her body and lifted her head. With her four paws, she picked up the baby and held it over the sh her shoulder. Two otters wrestled, tumbling over and over. Dad won't like this. Maggie dropped her line into the water. The pole jerked and Maggie reeled in the line. A fish flopped up over the rocks. She took the hook from its gill and held the jerking body between her hands. She whistled, coaxingly sweet. Nearby, the otter surfaced. She held the flapping fish and the otter waited. She whistled again, a soft whistle. The otter came closer. Two gulls hovered above him. Maggie tossed the fish toward the otter. A gull dipped, seized the fish, and looped high into the sky. The otter was gone. Maggie waited, and there he was again, this time with a muscle in one paw and a rock in the other. He put the rock on his chest and cracked the muscle against it. Maggie tried to count the staccato clicks of muscle on rock. Ten, twenty, thirty, sharp, quick clicks. And when he, the food was ready to eat, he held it in his paw, rolled over once, and glided back to his herd. When Maggie caught a second fish, she took it home. Old Barnaby, gray-muzzled and lazy with age, lay near the door. His t tail struck the floor in welcome. Maggie reached out with a foot and scratched his back. Why didn't you take Barnaby along? Her mother asked. He wouldn't go, Maggie said. He doesn't like to run in the sand anymore. Each day after school, all the following week, Maggie fished and watched. Otters rolled and frolicked in the cove, and in a minute or so, there, there he was, the, her otter, with his funny stubby whiskers and his big dark round eyes. When Friday afternoon came, she burst into the house and grabbed her fishing pole. What, what a girl for fishing, her mother said. Maggie laughed and headed for the cove. There was her otter, a sea urchin under one paw. He flopped on his back. Above the, the easy splash of water, Maggie clearly heard the crunch of his teeth against the spines of the urchin. And when he had eaten, he twisted it in the water and chased his tail. Maggie laughed, a high ringing laugh, and the otter disappeared. No fish today, her mother asked. Mom, I forgot to fish. Forgot? There's an otter in the cove, Mom. He's tame. An otter? A tame otter, Maggie said. He's really friendly. He's as playful as a puppy, and he trusts me. Number one, what kind of animal is Barnaby? A, a dog. B, a cat. C, an otter. D, a fish. Number two, read the paragraph. Offshore, the logs came to life. A mother otter floated on her back. Her baby curled on her stomach. She curved her body and lifted her head with her forepaws. She picked up the baby and held it over her shoulder. Two otters wrestled, tumbling over and over. Which sentence best states what the reader learns in this paragraph? A. The otters are fun-loving animals. B. Maggie has been hoping to see the others. C. Maggie makes friends with an otter mo mother. D. The otter, the otter ha are seen next to the floating logs. Number three. Which sentence best describes a main idea of the story? A. Maggie sat down near the edge of the low rocky cliff and baited her hook. The beach was empty. Not even Barnaby was in sight. B. A small herd of otters rocked with the, with, with the roll of the waves, cradled in the blankets of kelp, four paws folded on their chests. C. Maggie waited, and there he was again, this time with a muscle in one paw and a rock in the other. D. A tame otter, Maggie said. He's really friendly. He is as playful as a puppy, and he trusts me. Number four, which two details from the story best show the relationship between Maggie and the otter? A, each day after school, all the following week, Maggie fished and watched. B, two otters wrestled, tumbling over and over. C, 
She held the, the flapping fish and the otter waited. D. Swiftly, a young brown otter swam toward the still figure on the edge of the cliff. E. Maggie waited, and there he was again. Number five. Why does the otter trust Maggie? Choose all that apply. A. She catches fish for him. B. She watches him. C. She is patient. D. She tries to help him. E. She is a good fisherman.